what I'm going to go through is a case drawn up by an architect here. Uh, you'll see the basics. I've got a stretcher. I've got a couple of guys. There were never any ladies in particular operational roles, but I'll come back to that as we go along. And it was a male world, very much so in the early days. And most of its members belonged to the Queensland Defence Corps. Now these two fellows are carrying the stretcher. You'll notice a couple of things. The lady with the parasol shading the patient, that was important in Queensland's heat, but also in Queensland heat, the guys are dressed in surge tunics. And you imagine working and walking, how many kilometres and miles from that day, two or three, four, around Brisbane, catch the train sometime, go out to where the patient is, catch the train back, but walking from the train to the person, walking from the Brunswick Street station usually to the Royal Brisbane Hospital in the early days. So that, that was the work, it was arduous. It was hot, but these people were dedicated. They had a building, they were given a building uh, space in the Curie Mail building, and they slept on newspapers at night, and eventually they even got a telephone, because the early messages were brought by uh, messengers saying somebody's sick over at uh, New Farm or, or over South Brisbane near the walls. They did a lot of work around the walls of South Brisbane. But that was early days. The fellow with the pipe is Seymour Warren, and his family lives out at Indian. We've had contact with them over the years, and uh, they've got a lot of his records, and we've swapped a bit of information about him. The other names there I mentioned to, uh, to you about Mr. Slaughter there, EG. And the other names there, these people were members of the Defence Force and, uh, and also doing the ambulance in their own time as volunteers. And you can see by now that, oops, we've got a pointer on this. Yeah, yeah, there it is, you'll see, uh, it might work, I won't work on that screen. And you'll see they've got a cart with a cover over it now, and I mentioned the parasol before, but they've got a, what's called a litter now with wheels and the stretchers. A story of commitment, a story of community pride from Queenslanders, not from the ambulance people, and a story of um, adversity and arduous times, but also a story of uh, dedication and commitment. So, building's got better. You like that one, Mike? It's all Queensland timber from the north. And you look at the time, 1916, the war was just about to start. Now, I talked about ladies before. The rumour is that we, um, we might have had ladies from about 18, uh, sorry, 1975, 7, something like that. If you think about where the men were during the First World War, who were in the service. We had ladies on committees from the first day we started, community committees. We had them on auxiliaries fundraising. We had them as first aiders and volunteers. We had wives of, super, of uh, superintendents and officers living upstairs there taking calls while the men were out at night. And when the war was on, the ladies were in the service. But to answer the question whether the first lady in the Queensland Ambulance is the hardest question, because the records aren't that good. The men kept them, ladies. The men kept the records. <laughs> uh, okay, but this is, uh, we think, a T-Model Ford. Does anyone know? Can you verify the car? Or any of the people that know their cars? No. We went uh, up market a little bit more, we got canvas back on this one, but this is Kansas' first motor vehicle 